Mm -hmm, that's good. And let me share my screen as well. That's good. Make it maximize so that everyone can see. So give me a moment. Okay, guys. Yesterday, we covered protected, uh, which is belongs to the access modifier of this uh, oops concept, which was related to the encapsulation pillar of object oriented programming system. And uh, one access modifier is left for us, which was uh, public. Now, we're going to see that how public works as it is from its name it's a views that public means you if you add public function to the method to the mm, variable to anything inside the class you can access it anywhere without any hesitation like for example you can access it inside the file inside the package outside the package even you can access it uh, throughout the project anywhere with the public. Public is means that anyone can access it without any problem. Now let's directly create a program for the public. Let me close this section. Now let me expand this, expand this as well. Now uh, <clears throat> we can see that I told you that we can access public anywhere. Now I, I have two packages, protected one and protected two. Let me create one package inside protected one, one class. I'm sorry. Now I'll go with the class. Now I'll do it. And I would say that let's create a class. Let's name it um, personal information. And I would not say it's public static void. I just I would create a simple class. Inside that, I would do what inside that I will do create public first before that I will create and ID like so let's say suppose a ID had a semicolon let's say put string and uh, no let's say put string add name let's say put string email put string and add what address phone number let's say phone number i will do one thing and uh with that parallelly i will create a scanner class as well scanner I would say read equal to new scanner. Now inside that system dot n. Now do one, do what? If you don't import it manually or hover on that, it will be automatically import whenever we read. We use that read object. So let's do it in this way. Now I'll create one method public that all the time if we use it anywhere inside the package outside the package throughout the project so uh, this function will be only used for reading the personal information of a person let's say suppose take public void sorry void 
info array information i would say system dot out dot print ln inside that i would say enter your id id now i need to store the id inside the variable of id id is equal to read dot next time with the empo with the hand gear with the adding of next tent you can see that automatically import java dot util dot scanner is imported you can do this in this way as well now my next task is to do what to read system dot out dot print ln now inside that i would say enter your name now we should store the data which is read by name now for the reading uh and text variable text data or we can say sentences but now we don't need for next tent because next tent is used for uh, reading the integer data for string data we need to do what next line we have what we have next load next byte we have next line if you see and here we have what string scanner directly next line next line is used for this purpose only let me add a semicolon also so that the error get removed. Now, my next job is to do what? Let me add a little bit spacing also so that everything looks good and cool. Now, system dot out dot print ln add semicolon. Now, save, enter. Your so next information will be email. Now inside email variable, I need to store the data which is captured from the console. Read dot next word, next line. That's all. Now our next target will be system dot out dot the learn for that I would say enter your phone and inside that phone equal to rate dot next line. That's all. You read everything inside your package and for now, it is time to do it to display this data. Now for displaying, I would say system dot out dot print ln. Um, stored information, we can name it stored information. Let me split it in this way. Let me add one system dot out dot print alert <clears throat> for what? For only one line break purpose. Now our duty is to do what? To display all of the rated data below within the same package. Now, everything seems good. Now, my duty is to do what? ID is this plus add ID variable inside that. 
name is just concatenate the name variable now next email is plus email and next we would say phone is add phone phone variable right in here phone is capital so we need to store it inside a capital variable now everything seems good we need the data we display the data but we don't have any public static void main function inside our personal information class now this class can be utilized everywhere throughout the project because we added a public sign to it now I will save this and I will go and I will create one another file inside my protected two package. I would name this file, let's say, read personal information. And I will add public static void into it. Now inside that, this, you need to do it first of all go ahead take the personal information take the personal information class and come to this point and paste it right here but before that we need to do it we are missing some important thing that we need to import if we don't import what will happen let's see personal information i would say uh show the object name new personal information by the semicolon that's all if i hover on that let's see whether it's giving me hint or not that's not giving me hint so for that uh, because my eclipse is not that, that much updated so i would do manually import what import that package we need to Add that package. We need to import that protected one dot star. That's all, guys. Everything seems good. Error all gone. Now I would do it. Show dot what? Show dot info. I will call info up function now you can see that with the help of just how many lines just two lines i can read a lots of information i can store a lots of information this was the power of what this was the power of oops concept now with the public i don't need to extend anything i don't need to import anything that's why it's like what it's like a scanner class scanner is also what scanner class is also uh, used whenever they are creating the scanner class method so they created what they make it public so that if everyone just with the importing of their class they can utilize it very well like we did with the public now i'll save it and i will run this you can see that it says enter your id i would say 12 enter it says okay wait a second it says enter your email um let me use it as a ali enter your phone number okay name is not filling okay let's change this because we need to read what with the buffer we need to read data with the buffer so no worries let's make it in this way so that it don't get Control X. Let's swap the place as of now. Okay, the place are swapped. Now let me run this again. Enter your name, I would say Ali. Enter your ID, I would say 12. Okay, enter your ID. Well, it says again. Let's add something, some extra, one another extra thing between the email and phone number. Let me add control C. I would say enter your 
And let's say enter your card number like this or pen number. Let's change this to card and let's make this next and let's let me clear declare this as well now let's run it again enter your name or say ali enter your id 12 enter your email says again okay because you are the mix and the contacts. Sorry, I didn't get you. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Come again. Can you come again? Uh, next slide. I think that, that might be the better line. Number 24, email uh, to read that next time. I think that's about the next time. Uh, line 23, you are next time. Your voice is coming too slow. I don't know. But uh, I know where is the root problem. The root problem is just with the buffer flow. We need to read this kind of data. We need to read the string data all the time. If you have a bunch of string data, so we need to do that with the buffer flow. There is one another class reader. So these 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 things are only for development purpose. So we don't need it. Just I took for the sake of your information. So we can read that, or we can instead we can do it. Instead we can do it like this. Let's make it. Let's remove email as of now because we didn't study buffer flow class that's why it gives us this kind of error so instead of email i will i would pass card and i would say card number let's run it again Enter name, Ali, enter ID 12, enter card number. Let's say this will be card number. Hmm. Why it's not reading the phone number? Hmm. I think the next time, and that is the final class. No, no, it doesn't. It's only about the uh, buffer flow class. We need to use buffer flow for that. I would try to take that buffer flow because it's a little bit big concept and next sessions, I would try to do that. It will be more easier than scanner. And um, you guys, anyone, anyone, and at any time, if you want to use with a bunch of strings, so you need to use a buffer class for that. Scanner is only for reading what data, what type of data for reading integers data. And uh, if you have one, two or two, uh, type of a, a string data so extra than two or three i don't think so it will it would work but buffer flow is used for that string specific purpose so in next session we will cover that as of now let's make it a little bit more convenient let me run this name ali enter your name id 12 enter your card number this thing now you can say that all of the information that I read in that class, it is displayed for me just with the simple calling of one function. And that function is even located in another package in another file. That was about the public access specifier that we read. I will split the screen. You guys have to do what? You guys need to write this. First of all, go ahead, type this program. Let me remove this extra. Mm. 
this would be your first first program this is your second program just try to do what try to write this first and try to write this second program go ahead start typing the code i will do it i will pause the recording for a minute okay let's close these files let me close this also save it okay. now for arrays i would take one new package i would name it as a array classes plus files now in array class file folder i will write my program so that i can differentiate the programs now before starting the array let's see it is logic it is explanation why we use array what is array everything we will see right okay Here is the days. What is array? Guys, array normally we can say array is a collection of similar types of element which has a contiguous memory location. Let's have a definition. An array is a collection collection of similar type of elements which has contiguous memory location for example suppose as of now you understand that if i tell you that hey declare a variable of integer like uh, that store a number okay you would go like this int num1 and you would store two three any value in that but what if i say that hey go ahead and store a uh, 10000 valued integer value which which has the same variable name with the same variable name that gives me that ability that i can store how 10000 values like i can go so on till 10000 what does it means that array gives me this power this ability if that the data type is same we can store how many how much size that we add to array size we can store but the condition is it should be shared the common property of what similar data type this is the 
power of array. Now, in Java, array is object. In Java, array is an object which contains element of similar data type, which we store it in contiguous memory location, or we can say it's also a data structure that we are storing our data one by one. Now, the array has a little bit some rules. What is the rules of array? The rules of array that array location or address. Array has an address inside the memory and it is address all the time will start from zero. First of all, array will occupy a space inside your computer RAM. Suppose this is your computer RAM and you define array of size five. You give and take an example. This is not the actual syntax, but take an example that you store five comma six comma seven comma ten comma eleven five integer values inside your num inside the realm of computer what will happen they will assign a num space like this one two three four five now they will store five right in here they will store six right in here they will store seven right here they will store 10 right here and they will store 11 right in here. Now, for accessing these data, we need to do what the compiler in the program or the machine will directly not approach these values that they compare. Actually, instead, the compiler or the computer will assign address to each of this cell. Compiler will assign, assign address to each of cell. Like the address will start from where? Like normally people would say one, two, three, four, five. This will be the indexing. In array, the addressing will look like indexing. It, normal people will start from one, but in programming word, in technology word, in word of array, the number one will always start from the zero. Zero, one, two, three, four. That is like N minus one formula. This is the formula of array. N is the total number of your size, like we add five, and minus one is what? Like one minus four or five will be four. It means that index start from zero, it will go on till four. Now you could just keep in mind that always the array index from starts from zero. Means zero is one, one is two, two is three, three is four, four is five for the array. This is the indexing or addressing of an array. This is fixed, nobody can change it. And all the time you assign an array or you create any size of array, it will start their index from the zero position. Zero position means zero index or zero address. That with the help of these address, zero, one, two, three, four, we can do any sort of operation on these data or values which we stored inside our array. This was all about array. Now, is there any question, guys? Any confusing point? No, no questions. Now, let's see if what are the... Sorry? If we can just please uh, give the definition once again. Just read the definition yeah. of the array. The definition is an array is a collection of similar type of elements which has contiguous memory location. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're most. Now let's see the advantage and disadvantage of an array. Let's we'll split the screen into two parts. 
advantage first advantage of array is code optimization code optimization means that with the help of array, it makes the code optimized that we can retrieve or sort the data effectively. With that advantage, we can do it. We can sort or retrieve the data effectively. Or we can say, efficiently this is the first advantage the second advantage is that it gives us a random access random access now what does it mean it means that we can get any data located in our desired index. Like I told you that the index is specified to you, just find the index and you can access that, locate the, that value which is stored in that location. This was all about the advantage. Now array also has a disadvantage. this advantage this advantage of the array is size limit what does it mean it is not growing dynamically whatever value you set to it like suppose i set a hundred value so the array size will be hundred it will be not going to increment to 101 even dynamically the size is one fixed, one set or one's fixed, so nobody can change it. That's why it has a size limitation. This is the disadvantage of adding. Yeah, definitely Masood and Zakia. Just uh, first of all, I'm explaining the concept and I'm giving the definitions. So now I will go with that. What? With the rules and regulation, and after that, we'll type a program for that so that we can see directly what's going on. Let's see. Sorry, I got a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the limitation? Uh, you said there's a limitation that cannot be changed. Yeah, limitation is that, that on the top of the program, once I fix the size to 100, nobody can change it because the size will be statically set. But to cover the limitation of this array, we have one another concept that come up with name is collection that we're gonna study from next week. Collection is a framework that cover this size. The size will be grow dynamically at the runtime by the collection. So once we reach to collection, you will feel the difference. But first of all, let's see the arrays, what's the array? It has two advantages that code optimization, random access, but it gives us one limitation that if you set the size to 100 at the running time, you cannot change this. This size will not grow dynamically. Like we can say, let's say this 100 is like a, what, like a piece of stick that you set a size to eight, eight centimeter, 10 centimeter to one meter or to 80 centimeter, it will not grow. But collection, think of collection like a rubber band. Rubber band, how much if the rubber band is branded from the branded company, how many you can stretch it? It can be flexible stretch it. Size doesn't matter. And here we can take this example as of now. Is that clear, Ahmad? Yes, sir, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically the limitation is when you just create like a chart, if there's like a hundred, uh, it cannot go up to 101. 
Yeah, definitely. Let, uh, let's take an example of a school admission or a college admission that uh, each every year, uh, the college will only allow for Division A 100 students. They cannot go beyond 101 because there is a 100 seat. So we can use the array right in there. There will be limitation for that. We can go like this. Okay, let's create. A Thank program. you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I am most welcome. Let's create a program. Let's see first, read a basic program. I'll create a class. I would say array program. I would click on public static void main. Let's click on finish. Let's program. Let's program it inside the public static void main. First of all, you need to understand the syntax of an array. How the syntax looked like, it is very easy. Like suppose, for example, I would say, I will take array of integer five size. And I would give the name. Let's give the name a double R array. This name is depend on you, anything you can give. I will do it. I would pass a square bracket. That's all. I declared my array, but I didn't initialize it until now. I didn't pass any value till now to my array. Now I can pass the size, and there are many ways that I can pass the size to my array. First of all, you can do what you can directly assign the value right in there. But first of all, let's take it in this way. Now I will size array equal to what? Equal to like I would add 13. But here is a mistake. I told you that array indexing always start from zero. If you assign zero to it, if I save this, what it says, the local variable array may not have been initialized. Why it says like this may not have been initialized because we didn't assign any value to it. Now the next part, what it says, why I took it like this, because I want to, I want you guys to familiarize why I'm taking this value at which situation I should take the value like this. And now I need to do what I need to create the object because at the definition we say in Java R is an object. So after that, new, and again that size, so open the square bracket and add size of five. Here is a limitation that we add a size of five. Now I cannot go beyond five. Okay, zero, zero is what? Zero is equal to 13. Array, I would say, start from one. This is the address or index. One is equal to like, let's suppose 15, 25. Let's add array of two, which is located in address two. Let's say 12 array of, let's say in position three, we add 98. Let's say array of what? In position four, which is the last index we can say. Position four, we add uh, like 16. Add a semicolon. This is the point. Here is the point, guys that we did what? We create the object of array. Let me open the snappy tool. Let me take the screenshot. Let's explain it here. We created what? We created array of integer size five. Inside the RAM of computer, it will looks like this. What we store, we told them that it's integer of array size by one, two, three, four, five. It divides like this. And the name of this array or this location will be array, this whole location. 
Okay. Now next job is that we are assigned the addresses zero by default, one, two, three, four. Because we give the size five, so it will go till four. It, because it's starting from zero. Now in zero index, we store 13. And one index, we store 25. And two index, we store 12. And th th third index, we store 98. And then fourth index, we store 16. It will happen inside the realm of computer like this. This is the basic structure that we're gonna go to trying to do it or implement it inside the, what? Inside my code, which is right above and here. Now let's see that how we will display these information one by one. There are two ways, guys. First way is that I can ask directly displayed with the system dot out dot print and but here is one limitation that you will only display one position index like you can only display the zero index position value only 13 but if you want to display all of them for that you need to do what you need to run the loop and we use for loop for that let's say for now in here you need to do what? First thing, you need you know that the structure of for for i is equal to what? Because we understand that the index of zero star index of i start from zero, so i is equal to zero, the starting point, because it loops through the address the starting point. Now, this i if this array array dot what length l e n Length is what? Length is a method or function we can say that do what? Could check the length of my array and loop accordingly. Now, next time, I plus plus. Why it says like this? Let me check. Okay. Sorry. We need, we forget I. I less than what? Because we need to compare the condition. I less than array length. Array length is how much? Size five. Now in next line inside that, I will print the data system dot out dot print. Print a length. Let's say, or instead of that, Let's directly print the array. Now, pass the name of array, open the bracket, and pass the size right in here. How this syntax look like, guys? If I run this, first of all, check the output. If I run this, you can see that it is printing out the data of 13, 25, 12, 98, 16, which I assigned these value right in there. Now, Let's explain this scenario again inside the Snappy. Let me re-explain this again. Okay. Now what we did guys with the loop. First of all, till this position you understand that inside the RAM of computer, it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. Zero, one, two, three, four. The values are 13, 25, 12, 98, and 16. Name is array. Or name is array. Now, what did what we did with the for loop? First of all, we assign, we declare a variable of i which we assign a value of what? Which we assign value to zero. Why we did like this? Because we want to traverse through the addresses because each and every time we want to access the values of array, we need to access first of all their addresses. With the help of their addresses, we can access the values. Like if I want to access the 16 value, so I need to approach their address. 
like let's take an example if someone wants you're living in virginia like one eight three five random number if someone want to act, find you or want to approach you he will definitely find your address and after that he will meet you same concept applies here first of all we need to find the address with the help of address we can access the actual value now we add zero why we add zero because we implement we assign i to addresses that it will traverse through the addresses it will start from zero we add a condition that i should list an array dot what array dot length length this array dot length do it it will take the array it will find the address of array and it will length function call what length function do it it will count the size that one two three four five it will store the size what the store of five size five with their self now it do what first of all next time we did incrementation right in here and we are semicolon first for the first time when it comes i zero it will do execute what it will print the loop now in such system dot out dot print and what i did i passed the value of array of i array of i means what whatever data is inside the i it will print it right in here so in array of i we have for the first time zero okay if it is zero what is the equivalent of the zero what what value is attached with the address of zero the value of 13 is attached so it will display the 13 for me next time loop will increment it value of zero will increment it to one so once it incremented to once it will check in this condition if one is less than five definitely it's less so next time it would do what an array of i because we are grouping it an array of zero instead of zero it will put one now with the array of one what value we have with the address of one we have 25 so it will display 25 for you next it would do what it will increment the loop to two value to two now two is less than five definitely now array of two stores which value value of 12 is stored inside the address of two now loop again incremented i value will increment from two to three now three is less than five definitely it's less than five so it would do what array of three will display what's what value with three we have 98 guys now loop incremented from three to four. Now four is less than five. Definitely it's less than five. So it would do what? It would do array of size what? Four array of address four and address four. What, what we store? We store 16. We are done till this point. We achieve each and everything which we want. We stored for five values, which was 13, 25, 12, 98 and 16. Now, next time the loop will not break right in here. It will increment again to five. Now, is it possible that five is less than five? No, it's not possible. So the loop will break in here, turn it in here, and whatever data they stored inside the ROM of computer, they will display it for us like this 13, 25, 12, 98, and 16. This will be the outcome of my array. Now understand, is that clear guys? Was it yes easy or no? Yeah, yeah. Okay, do one thing. I will give you three minutes. Go ahead, type this program. I'll pause the recording. Now, guys, we have what this was one way that we declare an array and we initialize the size manually one by one. We have a shorter way or a smaller way than that also. You guys do it. Go ahead, take a new file, class, name it. 
simple way as well. I would say public static void main, click on finish. Now my next job is to do it. Suppose for example, I'm taking array of what size five, but now instead of declaring in that way, I would do like this. Let's say I will name the uh, my array like this. Mm. <clears throat> Let's uh, say integer, mm, I would name it like uh, ID equal to. Now I will open this curly bracket. Now I'll assign the has how many size, how much values I can give, I can give right there. It will get the size automatically. So 12, comma 13, comma this, comma this, comma this, comma this, comma this, and that. How many size, how many size I give? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have array of size five, which we stored a different values inside that. Now, same logic, same loop applies here for, just go ahead with that end. I is equal to zero, same concept. Now I is less than what? Less than ID dot length. Semicolon I plus plus. What it says, let's check it. Mm -hmm. ID cannot resolve. Okay, because we are, yeah, spelling mistake. So length is also has a spelling mistake. Mm -hmm. I'll pass this like this. When I pass like this, now I'll do what? I will do it. I will definitely print the values from here. Now, what I will do, I'll copy this from here. Control C. Just come paste it right in here. And just with the slightly changes, change the name to ID. That's all. Now, if I print, this is another way. If I run the code, you can check it. If I run the code, you can see that whatever values are given to the array, it's printed out for me, 12, 23, 45, 122, 12, 12, 12, and 12, that's all. This was another way that we can declare an array. This was the declaration part. And we also initialize the array right in here in front of this. This was the shorter way. Now go ahead, I will give you three minutes for that also. Go ahead and type the code, I will pause the recording. Okay, you can ask a good question. Uh, Abdullah's question that what are the difference between both way? We declared in this way, Abdul, whenever, if we want to use the dynamic class with the array, so we have to go in this way. Whenever we declare a scanner class and we read the size of array dynamically from the console, that how many size I'm going to give, I will give it five, six, ten, hundred, 10, 100, suppose. So you, go, you have to go with this syntax. So I will practice that code also with you. And I will write that program also so that the concept will be more clear for you. But if I wanna go statically, if I wanna go, uh, and assign the value statically. So I will prefer this way, not that way, statically, which I did. I will prefer this way. This way, let it be to use it with the scanner class. And this way, let it be use it to the static way that we are assigning directly value. This is a little bit shorter than that. Is that understood? Yes, yeah, so with the second class, we cannot uh, add a scanner class. Am I right? No, we cannot go with the scanner, yeah. This is okay, thank you very much. Tougher. Yeah. Now, uh, here I want to mention one point more, guys, that uh, you can see that now before, uh, suppose I would say, I will ask someone, uh, Ahmad Samadi, I'm asking you that yes, if I want to, if I want to, before that you know array, before you know in array, forget that you study array. If I assign you a task that, hey, Ahmad, 
store these value 12, 23, 45, this much of value inside a variable and display to me. So what would you do? Well, sir, the first one that you explained, we, we had to create a chart like we have to put the value of uh, 0, 1, 2, no, no. 3, 4, Ahmad, 5. Ahmad, yes. you forget that you today you study array. Just tell me in a simple way how you will do that. Look, I would tell if forget that you study array, if I tell you that, okay, you have ID of 12, 23, 45, 122, how would you do? On that time, you need to do what? And ID, ID one is equal to 12. And yeah, create so many ints yeah, uh, or strings. Yes. To... But here, I think when they're in same class uh, or same, uh, like it's an int or a string. In that case, we can just make a bulk and definitely, read all at once. Definitely, because the data types, the values are sharing same common data type. And we are, we are our concern is only with the values that we want to display. So we put all the values in same name, variable name, just we change the name. We can say like this, it is not formal, but we can say like this that, array is a mother of variables that inside array you can store as many values you want but it has need to the condition is it need to share the same data type that's what and look now instead of declaring too many variables that store that take a lot of space in the memory just i take one space and assign that much value to it this is the usability and use case of an array now is that clear guys Confusion solved? Yes, sir. Yeah, it actually saves time in, instead of uh, declaring every single value. Yeah, definitely. Ashkan ask a question. How do we add a scanner class? Ashkan, you will see that in next session. Okay, just go ahead, guys. Can I have one more question? Yeah, go ahead, Katya. Um, so you said it can, they have to share the same data types, right? So for example, if, to say I don't want to have an in integer, yeah. then I can have a different data type and then they will have to be the same. Like for example, can I have a string? Yeah, sure. You, have, you can have a string, you can have a character, you can have any data types you want, but you have to declare it in here. Like if you want to declare a string, so add a string and assign the values. But there will be different use cases. Okay. Got it? Okay. Okay, guys, I will pause the recording. So go ahead, type the code. Okay, guys, uh, we are winding up here. We cover the public access modifier, which was belongs to encapsulation. We cover arrays in today's session. So to tomorrow, we're going to start with the, uh, we will see that how we will read array dynamically with the scanner class. We will see the use case of that. Um, we will see um, there is one another topic that which is still remaining with us. And this is the fourth building blocks or pillars of hoop, which we called abstraction. We will see the abstraction as well, alongside with the array, arrays, which we use inside the scanner class. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining. Is there any question? No, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Let's no see if you want to share your screen. You. Okay, let me pause the recording.